So Austin over at the Diecast Resurrection channel contacted me about doing a challenge video. He said I could choose the challenge and the rules, so I chose movie cars as the challenge, and that's really the only rule. I then set about figuring out what movie car to make, and then I remembered a subscriber named Travis had asked me to do the Mutt Cuts van from the movie Dumb and Dumber. That just sounds like a lot of fun, so that's what I decided to make for my movie car. So I started looking through the cars at my local box store to find a van, and I came across this pop culture super van. The car used in the movie, I believe, was a 1984 Ford Econoline, which I can't say if Mattel has ever released. But really, given what all I'm going to do to it, any van will pretty much do. So I grabbed the super van and start taking it apart. Now I'll be using a lot of glue on this project, and the fine people over at Starbond were kind enough to send me a large collection of their CA glues to try out. For this project, however, I'll only be using the clear glues, the black glue I'm saving for another project. Opening this up, I can show you what comes in the kit. You get some instructions, two glue tips, which is great because I forget to put the cap back on mine all the time, and several very fine tips, which can come in really handy for small projects. Anyway, I'll leave an affiliate link below if you want to check out the entire line of their CA glue. I can give you a spoiler though, their accelerators are amazing. Almost instantaneous and no clouding, but you'll get to see that later. So there's a lot of ways to go about building the Mutt Cuts van, and I decided to go with the 3D printer way. But first I had to create the parts. I'm reasonably competent in Blender, but more and more I find myself using Tinkercad. If you're unfamiliar, Tinkercad is a free online 3D design program that is very simple and quick to use and to learn. I decided to create the front of the van in one piece along with the back two paws. I use a resin printer, and resin is very easy to sand compared to plastics used in other 3D printers like ABS and PLA. As such, I didn't spend a lot of time modeling everything to its final shape. Instead, I just went for a rough shape of the item, knowing I'll sand them down to their final shape later. The only major modifications I'll need to make to the van is to file down the grill so that I can remove the base once the printed part is added, and I'll also need to create a gap in the bumper for the dog's tongue to come through. I could use a file on the bumper, but instead I opted to use a burr tool on my Dremel just to speed things up. Once I have the metal items filed down and the part fits, I can go ahead and glue it on. To keep from gluing the base to the body, I'll first spread the glue on the front and then add the part. I position it as best I can and then place the base on using the bumper to line everything up. I then carefully remove the base and spray the part with the accelerator to freeze its position. I had to do this part off camera as there was little to no chance I would get it straight while looking through the camera screen. For the paws, I used a barrel sander on my Dremel to thin them down and shape them. These barrel sanders make quick work of the resin, so shaping only took a few seconds, but you do have to be careful as you can sand right through things if you're not watching out. Once I have the general shape, I'll glue the part to the side of the van, taking care here not to bind up the back wheels, as I want the van to roll. Here again, I spray the part with the accelerator, freeze it in place. I can then use the gap filling nature of CA glue to fill in the spaces between the body and the part. This is when the accelerator is really handy, as I want to stop the glue from going everywhere, so by spraying it with the accelerator, it will set up and stay in place. For larger gap filling and sculpting on the body, I'll use some Tamiya putty. This stuff is great, as you can apply it as thick as you want, and it still dries very quickly. In most cases, less than an hour. I find the best way to apply it is straight from the tube. Here I am using it to fill in the area on the hood to match up with the 3D printed part. Once I've built up the layer I want, I can set the car aside and the putty will set up. After a few minutes, it'll be set up enough that I can handle the casting without worrying about the putty. In this case, I'm going to add some material to the roof and use gravity to build a sort of bridge to the nose or the area between the dog's eyes. After this sets up, I will do the same for the bottom. I was looking at my reference photos and found that my dog's feet were a little too tall, so I used my barrel sander to shorten them. You can see here just how fast the barrel sander can sand down the resin. For the dog ears, I decided to use the putty to build up on itself with several layers. The idea here was to apply enough putty to get it to drip slightly and form each ear. There are lots of ways I could have made the ears, including the way I made the tail with some milliput. Milliput's another putty that is very useful for this type of project. Here you just mix equal amounts of the putty from each of the two logs in the box. This sets off a reaction that will harden the putty over a couple hours. If you haven't guessed, I am trying to show a bunch of different methods for building this car, with each of these methods easily swapped out for the other. 
You could easily make all these parts on this car out of Milliput if you wanted to, or 3D print them all if you have that available. If you want to see some amazing Milliput work, you should check out Toy Poloi's channel. He can pretty much make anything out of Milliput, and his channel is criminally undersubscribed for the quality of work that he does. I'll leave a link below, so please check him out. After about 24 hours of drying time, I could start sanding and blending everything together. I started with a small needle file and then moved to some sandpaper. Getting everything perfect is not all that big of a deal here because of what I'll be doing later, so I just need everything to look as close as possible to what it looked like on the movie car. With all the sanding and shaping done, I can go ahead and prime everything for paint. The primer will also blend everything together, so I can much better see any mistakes I might have made with all the putty. Once the primer dries, I'll paint the entire van with a brown acrylic color. Again, the specific color of brown is not all that important. The main reason to paint the car is to have a uniform base color. If what I'm doing later works out, you really shouldn't see any of this brown. Next, I need to paint in some of the details like the nose and the headlights. Again, perfection is not required here, just that the parts are painted. While I have black loaded in the brush, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of pre-shading around the ears and paws. I didn't know it at the time, but the pre-shading will not show through at all later, so this step was rather useless. Last, I'll go ahead and paint the tongue red. Alright, now that the paint is dried, I can finally see if my idea is going to work. What I'm going to do is flock the car with the grass applicator I use on my dioramas. The grass applicator applies a charge to the special magnetic grass loaded inside it and then applies an opposite charge to the metal of the van. This makes the grass stand up on its end when you shake the applicator over the item you're flocking. Of course, you need an adhesive in the middle of the process to hold the grass in place. And this is where the CA glue will come in really handy as I can apply the glue, apply the grass, and then set everything with the accelerator and move on to the next area on the van. Rinse repeat until the entire van is covered. Due to having the accelerator, the entire process took about five minutes. After the flocking was done, it was time to give the dog a haircut with a pair of appropriately sized scissors. The object here is to trim off all the hairs that stand out and try to get all the hairs to be the same size. And this part took a little bit longer than five minutes. Looking at some videos on the inside of the original van, I could see that it had a maroon interior. I don't have maroon paint, but I do have red paint and I am painting a black plastic, so I should end up with a darker red if I paint a thin enough layer. I think this will work out okay given how difficult the interior will be to see in the first place. While I wait for the paint to dry, I'll switch over to working on the dog tag sign. I decided to make this out of some thin basswood. I had some thinner balsa wood, but I find balsa wood to be difficult to sand, especially at this size. To engrave the wood, I'll be using my full spectrum laser. At 100% it would cut right through even though I was using raster cut so I had to keep dialing it back until it cut the image with the right depth. Once it did this I cut the sign out with some scissors and then sanded all the edges. I could have cut all this with the laser but that requires a vector map and it would have taken me about as long to make that in draft site as it took to sand the edges. Moving on to the base I've already painted it brown but now I want to add a little rust to each of the tire rims. I did this by airbrushing on some German Red Brown Acrylic Primer by Vallejo. After this dries, I'll go over it with some Citadel Non Oil Wash to grime up the rims. These really are not the correct wheels for this van. The real van had steel rims without the hubcaps, but I think I can pull it off with what I have here. While I wait for that to dry, I'll switch over to the body and load up some black paint into the airbrush. I want to add in some dirt, grime, and shading to the body. The dirt and grime are self-explanatory. They're simply there to copy the original and add some character. The shading is needed to separate the different items like the ears and legs from the body of the car. Without shading, the ears and legs would blend into the body. So what I will need to do is go over the areas where the parts meet the body and add a little paint to darken these parts. This will make them pop out from the main body. It's what I was trying to do earlier with the pre-shading, but that got completely covered up. You do shading in two-dimensional drawings to give a fake 3D effect to the art. Here it's the same thing, but on a three-dimensional object. It's not creating a fake effect, instead it's just accentuating the 3D effect. You're sort of helping the brain along with rendering the object in someone's mind. Of course, you're watching this three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional screen, so technically we're back to the fake two-dimensional object, but on a real three-dimensional item. And now I'm having an existential crisis. Let's just move on. 
On a lot of the engines I saw in line of the van, it had tape holding the back paws up, though several did not. I decided to add this detail in anyway. I have some brown glue back tape that I decided to use. When using this tape, you wet the back with water, which activates the glue. I thought this would work great as the wet tape is easy to form around objects. However, the glue was not strong enough, so I ended up having to use some of the CA glue to glue it into place. While I had the glue out, I went ahead and attached the Mutt Cuts tag. I decided to only use one tag. On the real van, you could only see one tag at a time, but on my smaller scale model, it was easy to see both at the same time, and this didn't look right. So I instead opted for just one tag. So at this point, the base is dry and I can put the rubber tires back on. These tires have red lines on them and would look strange, so to remove them, I'll put the tires on backwards to show off the black walls. The black walls look good, but they are way too clean, so I'll grab my weathering powders, in this case a dirt colored powder, and brush this all over the wheels to dust them up. Alright, after I added the dust, it was time to put the van back together. However, it was not really the end of this project because I had to go back and do some touch up on the bumpers as I had to file away some excess glue and fur to allow me to get the car back together. Once I could get everything back in place, I needed to fix the areas I messed up. I also needed to blend the base into the body with the airbrush, which I did off camera. But after all that, I was done. I have to say I really enjoyed this one. If I had to do it over again, I would like to use a green light or say a Johnny Lightning van or any van that is a bit more to the correct scale. Hot Wheels are not really to scale. For example, the tires on this van are way too wide and extend past the wheel wells. This makes it sporty looking but makes projects like this difficult as I have to compensate for these issues. But all in all, it was not that big of a problem. So I'll put a link below to Diecast Resurrection's channel and a link to his video once I see it posted. So be sure to check out whatever he came up with for this challenge and also check out all his other videos and subscribe. Let me know what you think about my Mutt Cuts van below, what you would do different or change. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.